How's everyone doing today? I have a Blu-ray and DVD collection update with 12 pickups, all of which I've never seen. I haven't seen any of these ones, so definitely let me know if you've seen any of them and what you think of it, and let me know which one is your favorite, and let me know what I should watch first. Leave me those comments down below. But first up, let's get into the movies. I'll do the Blu-rays first, then the DVDs. A Blu-ray DVD combo pack of the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. I have never seen a full single episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. I've seen like parts of episodes here and there. Um, I think I was just a little bit older when this show really got popular. I know it's been on for a long time. Um, so, you know, I've seen, you know, clips here and there and parts of episodes, but never a full episode. Um, it looks, you know, decently, you know, comedic and entertaining. I feel like if you have an open mind and you can just go along with the silliness and goofiness of it, I think you can enjoy it uh, from what I've seen. But the plot of this one kind of sounds like, you know, Finding Nemo. Uh, SpongeBob's uh, pet snail Gary goes missing and then uh, his friends uh, help him uh, find uh, Gary. So it's just all about them, you know, teaming up together. And it's as a heroic and hilarious journey. And, you know, they're going to find uh, friendship. Uh, so all the different characters in here. There's a new uh, mini-movie, deleted scene, sing-along. So uh, if you're a fan of Spongebob, you'll most likely be happy with, uh, you know, all the different special features on here of the sing-alongs and mini-movie. Uh, but I will be watching this one. Uh, you know, I, maybe you don't need to watch the, the whole series to watch this movie. I'm assuming you don't. Uh, you kind of know who the characters are. Like, I know Squidward and Patrick and... You know, I've seen enough stuff. I mean, it's so hugely popular. Uh, let me know who your favorite character from SpongeBob SquarePants is. And if you have a favorite episode, maybe you can, you know, give me an episode to watch here and there. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be decently entertaining. And the concept is something we've seen before. So it's a good formula, uh, you know, with the, the morals and the values of friendship and stuff like that and helping people. Uh, with, you know, some crazy characters right there. And uh, this is a release uh, from Paramount. And then next up, I've got His Dark Materials Season 1 and Season 2. Uh, this is released from Warner Brothers and is on HBO. I know uh, The Golden Compass is part of the book trilogy uh, from Philip Pullman. And, you know, it's kind of like fantasy uh, in a realm of like magic and animals and things like that. Um, the cast in here is really interesting. You've got Lin-Manuel Miranda, James McAvoy. Big fan of him. I think he's a great actor. Everybody talks about Split. But he was in a movie called Filth, which I think is so awesome underrated and Irvin Welsh uh, adaptation his performance in there was excellent he's been around for a while though uh, very talented uh, actor uh, but there's a bunch of other recognizable people in here James Cosmo uh, a whole bunch of uh, good actors in here so uh, you know fantasy magic uh, animals and uh, secret powers and stuff like that I've heard great things about this series so I'm looking forward to delving into it uh, season one and season two. And next up, I have three Warner Archive collection releases. The first one is It Happened at the World's Fair with Elvis. Let me know what your favorite Elvis movie is. Uh, In the Wild Country is probably uh, one of my favorites from him just because it's not just a straight up musical. It's more showing his acting chops and the drama. Uh, and I thought he did really well in that role. I wish he would have done more like that. Uh, but this one uh, sounds really entertaining. I like the concept here. Uh, and it has the backdrop of the 1962 Seattle's uh, World Fair on uh, the Space Needle and the monorail and all that kind of stuff. So I like the setting for it. Uh, I've always wanted to actually visit uh, the Pacific Northwest and thought about possibly living there too. I know I like a lot of the stuff that uh, happens there, and especially the rain as well. I don't know, I, I'm just kind of fascinated. Uh, I liked Frasier, the TV show, and you know, just a lot of different things, the music that came out of there, uh, just, uh, you know, kind of the environment, the lifestyle, uh, always kind of intriguing, although the Supersonics are no longer there. That's kind of a bummer. But uh, yeah, apparently Kurt Russell uh, as a child is in this too. He uh, He's a child who... Uh, kicks Mike in the shins, Elvis right here. So that's pretty interesting. There's 10 songs here uh, that are famous uh, from Elvis. Uh, he plays a pilot for hire, Mike. And, uh, you know, he's uh, into gambling and stuff. And uh, I there's a, you know, romance aspect, of course, in, El in any Elvis movie, essentially, there is. But, um, yeah, I'm uh, excited for this one. I like Elvis. My uncle was a huge Elvis fan, kind of uh, dedicated his look to Elvis as well. Uh, and he had a big, like, uh, painting of Elvis. But, yeah, I I'm, a, I'm a fan. Let me know your favorite uh, Elvis song as well. Uh, next up is 
Guns for San Sebastian. And then the movie after that is, uh, there was a Crooked Man. Crooked Man stars Kirk Douglas and uh, Guns for San Sebastian uh, stars Anthony Quinn. I recently watched a Western uh, called The Last Train from Gun Hill, which starred uh, Anthony Quinn and Kirk Douglas. Really good Western there. This is one that I haven't seen, uh, Guns for San Sebastian. Uh, Anthony Quinn is a rebel uh, hiding from the Mexican army and he uh, escapes to this uh, village, San Sebastian, uh, where the locals believe he's a holy man. He's pretending to be a holy man and uh, the, he finds out that um, the area is being attacked by uh, it's savage Yaquai attacks and uh, he can't hide anymore. He has to fight and uh, apparently one of the enemies is uh, Telco, played by Charles Bronson. Um, so I think that's really interesting. Charles Bronson is Lithuanian. He's like a, I think he was like one of 15 kids and, uh, grew up in like a coal mining community in Pennsylvania. Uh, but yeah, he's played a lot of Native American characters. Chato's Land is one that pops up, but he's been a Native American character in, I want to say at least like four or five movies that I can think of. Uh, so another one here, it sounds like, um, Teclo rather is the name on here, but yeah, I, I like the cast a lot. So, uh, you know, Anthony Quinn, Charles Bronson, uh, those two right there definitely uh, sell me on it. I'm, I've become a big Western fan. Let me know what your favorite Western movie is. I've found so many great ones recently, and there's been some really good modern ones, too. I'd like to see more horror Westerns. I feel like that's an untapped market. There's a few out there. Grim Prairie uh, Tales is one from back in the day. Uh, but Ghost Town, another one. But the top two, Bone Tomahawk recently, and then Burrowers. Uh, there's one called The Wind. Um, there's another one recently too, but Bone Tomahawk and The Burrowers. Burrowers is so underrated, but those two in particular are probably the best of that genre, but I definitely feel like it's an untapped market. I'd like to see more horror westerns for sure. But when I was younger, I wasn't a big western fan, but now it's become like my third favorite genre. Horror by far, and then sci-fi, and then westerns. Um, next up is There Was a Crooked Man. Uh, this is directed by uh, Joseph L., uh, Mankiewicz, who directed Cleopatra, All About Eve, uh, Guys and Dolls, very iconic uh, writer, director, uh, and Academy Award winner as well. But with him involved as uh, the producer and director here, and in the cast, Kirk Douglas, Henry Fonda, Hume Crone, uh, Warren Oates, and Burgess Meredith, I'm sold. Um, I don't need to know anything else. Don't even need to know the synopsis, the plot. Just throw it out the window. Uh, the director and the cast, uh, I'll watch anything with, with that lineup. Uh, but basically, it's uh, you know a, a prison who's trying to escape, and he's getting help from other prisoners. And the warden, uh, you know, doesn't want to see this happen. Apparently, there's five hundred thousand dollars in stolen loot hidden away as well, and he's trying to recover that. Uh, so yeah, that that cast is just so awesome. Uh, and I don't really love the look of that cover, the artwork with the long legs, and even the title. The title is like smaller than the cast right there. I don't know. I've seen a few releases like that. I'm not a big fan where the title is like so small. Um, but yeah, definitely excited here. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the scripts from David Newman and Robert Benton, who uh, wrote Bonnie and Clyde. So yeah, uh, the cast, the director, um, I, I feel like, how can you not be interested? Uh, next up is a UK release uh, by 101 Films, The Headhunter. This sounds awesome. Uh, it's a Region B release, though, so you would need a Region Free player for this one. You can import it. Uh, there's a, you know, you can go to their website, but there's also other websites that uh, sell imported uh, Blu-rays. Uh, so, yeah, Diabolic DVD is one that is, I think, a really good one uh, website where you can find all kinds of, especially, you know, cult horror stuff. Uh, but this is a uh, kind of mid uh, medieval uh, realm and uh, dealing with monsters and stuff like that. Uh, and... So uh, this warrior has all these different, uh, you know, trophy heads of monsters, uh, but he's trying to find the one that killed his daughter. So he's traveling all around and he's trying to get revenge. And uh, it's crazy looking on the back. There you go. There is the spine and the disc. So uh, I would love to see more of these companies release stuff that's region free, though. Um, so, yeah, I feel like there's so many interesting titles and so many titles that we don't have released over here in the u.s that are released in other uh countries and stuff and uh, having a region locked is a bummer i know there's different licensing rights depending on the regions and stuff like that but i don't know it's a little a little sad sometimes i was like ah i had a region free player i don't anymore but uh 
you know, I, I didn't realize initially this was a region B locked release, but uh, I, I think I'm going to break down and get another region free player. I feel like there's too many good releases out there not to. But next up is Undercover Punch and Gun. This is a Haya original. Haya is like a streaming service that does a lot of like martial arts, kung fu stuff, uh, and you know, kind of like Shudder. Uh, they have you know the horror. Uh, there's a few you know services like that, but uh, this one right here is about a cop uh, who's undercover and trying to uh, infiltrate this uh, drug ring and bring uh, the the drug kingpin down. Uh, and then uh, a, a rival agency uh, attacks during uh, the drug trade and covers blown and they're forced to work together and uh, take down the drug kingpin and smuggler behind everything. So it looks like there's going to be a lot of fight sequences, shootouts, uh, balls to the wall action right there. Look at that cover. Uh, so definitely looking forward to checking this out. This is from Welgo USA. They do a lot of great uh, releases, uh, you know, uh, martial arts and things like that. But they also have some English releases as well. This one is a uh, Chinese film, so um, subtitles. I feel like some people, I hear that all the time. They don't watch movies with subtitles. I feel like you're missing out on some of the best movies in the world. Uh, so many great films that I've found uh, are international releases. So I say this all the time. If you can read, you can watch a movie with subtitles. It's really not that difficult. And the more that you do it, the easier it is to retain. And, you know, I, for me, I watch English movies with subtitles too, because sometimes the dialogue is inconsistent. Sometimes people talk at a really low volume. Uh, you can miss certain things. So if you have the subtitles on, you just get more information. Um, next up is Defending Jacob. Uh, I believe this was on Apple TV. Uh, this is a Paramount release, uh, DVD, three disc set. Uh, J.K. Simmons is in here, uh, Chris Evans. This was based on a New York Times bestselling novel from William Landay. And it's basically about um, a family who is dealing with the realization that their 14 year old kid might be a murderer. Uh, and Chris Evans is, uh, you know, the father, and he's also a uh, assistant district attorney, and he's kind of uh, torn between uh, his duty to uphold the, the law and justice and uh, the love for his son. Uh, and I've heard great things about this one, uh, and I like the cast in here too. Um, so it has uh, Chris Evans, uh, Michelle Dockery, Jaden Martell right there. Uh, he's, you know, he's in the It movies, uh, and then, uh, J.K. Simmons is excellent, Cherry Jones, too, and I'll go ahead and show you there's the back, and the interior, like that, where it has the episodes, and then the swing tray, very simplistic, straightforward, great release for that, uh, looking forward to checking that out, and then another one dealing with a very kind of similar, uh, where it's like court drama and then a kid who did something terrible. Uh, and it's a Your Honor. This is a, from Showtime and um, uh, CBS right here. And it's a 10 episode release, also a three disc DVD set. Brian Cranston, uh, and he's a New Orleans judge whose teenage son is involved in a hit and run accident. Uh, it leads to just a crazy game of lies and deception. And there's a really good cast in here too. Um, so just, this is another one where it deals with, you know, somebody in the law and their son did something terrible. This one though, I haven't seen it, so I don't know for sure if the son did that or not. Uh, but this one right here, they just say it outright. So Brian Cranston, amazing actor, uh, of course, Breaking Bad, uh, Malcolm in the middle, but he's done a lot of great roles. Um, so definitely looking forward to checking this one out. Nice slip cover for it. And I'll go ahead and show you. This one has a swing tray as well. And the same with the gray discs. And then on the discs, they have, uh, you know, just as the episodes. So pretty straightforward, simplistic for the release for these uh, TV series. But I think these are, that's how it should be done. Uh, I feel like sometimes, you know, you have stacked discs and discs and sleeves and all kinds of stuff. But this is the, the best way to do it uh, with the swing tray. And then uh, if you have liner notes with the episodes, that's great too. But if you just have the episodes uh, written on the discs, that also works. Next up is uh, Georgetown, and this is a DVD-only release, and it's the directorial debut of uh, Christoph Waltz. On the back, it just says, directed by C. Waltz, and, uh, you know, from Inglorious Bastards and Django Unchained. Uh, this has a great cast. Christoph Waltz, who also directed and acts in uh, the lead role here. Vanessa Redgrave, uh, Annette Bening. Uh, so this is based on a true story about um, Ulrich Mott, who's an eccentric uh, smooth talking social climber 
and uh, he basically has a lot of people in Washington DC wrapped around his finger and his uh, wife who's older uh, turns up dead in their home and then the daughter uh, begins to suspect uh, Christoph Waltz uh, that he may be hiding uh, some secrets and more information comes out and just kind of a lot of crazy lies and deception throughout and a very you know eccentric character uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one. I think Christoph Waltz is very talented as an actor. And I can see him uh, as a director. Uh, so I'm definitely intrigued for checking this one out. This is a release from Paramount. Uh, next up is Wildcat, which uh, is another one that's a uh, DVD only. And I've seen a, a few movies with this kind of concept, uh, dealing with terrorism and stuff like that. Uh, and it can be a really tense watch. Uh, it's about a reporter played by Georgina Campbell and she's in the Middle East and she's taken captive by, uh, I guess, a, uh, it says a militant group. Uh, but they think that she's hiding uh, her true identity and they're, I guess, torturing her. And, uh, you know, they want to get information and make sure their next terrorist attack goes through. And she's just uh, trying to survive and trying to outsmart them, outwit them and, uh, you know, turn the tables. And this is uh, another release from Paramount right here. Um, it looks gritty. Uh, the concept it seems like it's going to be very palpable tension. So uh, I, these ones, again, are ones that really uh, get my emotions and blood boiling. And so I, I like that. If I feel like a film can do that, uh, it's a good script. Uh, it's good acting. Uh, again, I've seen movies with a similar premise. And I feel like they always just, I don't know, make me real tense and uh, make me invested in the character. So definitely looking forward to checking this one out. Wildcat right here. So there you go. Those are the 12 pickups. If you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. Again, I haven't seen any of these, so I'm looking forward to uh, checking them all out. A bunch to watch. And uh, yeah, let me know uh, what is your favorite from this uh, haul. And let me know what you think I should watch first. Should I binge some of these seasons? Uh, you know, Your Honor and Defending Jacob were miniseries. Three disc sets right there. And then uh, His Dark Materials, uh, season one and two. So a bunch of, you know, eclectic mix right there of movies, but some ones I'm really excited uh, to check out. I've heard some great things about uh, a lot of these, especially, you know, all the uh, TV shows and miniseries, Defending Jacob, Your Honor, His Dark Materials. Uh, I'm definitely excited for uh, some of the Warner Archive releases. And I'm always uh, interested in checking out um, the the Haya originals right here. I've seen some good stuff from them, some great uh, martial arts and you know, kung fu stuff and action. Um, so I'm definitely intrigued. SpongeBob to lighten the mood, you know, and you know, anything Elvis is always a good time. So there you go. Let me know all of your thoughts. Leave me those comments down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.